How does a, a person perform Umrah? So when it comes to Umrah, firstly, a person assumes the state of Ihram at the Miqat. And he places on the two garments, the upper garment and the lower garment of Ihram. And as soon as he intends to enter the state of Ihram, then he has forbidden certain matters upon himself. Firstly, being in the state of Ihram means that it's not permitted for him to shave or cut his hair. And also to cut his nails or trim his nails and to perfume himself. And for no. the male, that he's not able to cover his head, meaning something which touches his head, like a hat or a scarf. And neither does he wear any type of knitted garment like the thobe or trousers, only the garments of ihram. And of course, this pertains to the male and not the female. And also, he's not permitted to hunt any land animals. And neither is the person permitted to uh, conduct or uh, be a, a part of a nikah, whether it's the wali, the guardian, or the bride, or the groom. And also, it is forbidden for him to uh, have intimate relations or anything which is before that. And then after this, the person who is making Umrah, he begins to say the Talbiyah. And the Talbiyah, meaning Labbaik, Allahumma Labbaik, this Talbiyah, this is a person answering the call of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he ordered Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam to tell the people to come and perform Hajj and Umrah. So when a person says the Talbiyah, Labbaik, Allahumma Labbaik, he's saying, Oh Allah, I have answered your request. Oh Allah, I have answered your command. And a person makes a talbiyah with La ilaha illallah affirming his tawheed. And this talbiyah, it is an act of ibadah. And it is the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the talbiyah is not a song which is sung. And a Shaykh ibn Uthmi rahimullah, he mentioned this. He said talbiyah is a type of dhikr. And it's not something which needs to be sung. And the person who is performing umrah, he, remain, he remains constant upon saying the talbiyah until he enters into Mecca. And then once a person enters into Mecca and sees the Kaaba, he stops the talbiyah. Naam. And then he stands parallel to the black stone. And then when he stands parallel to the black stone, he exposes his right shoulder by placing the garment of ihram under his armpit and over the left shoulder. And then he makes the takbir by saying Bismillah, Allahu Akbar. And, 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 and the Kaaba is towards his left. So from the black stone, and as he walks around with the Kaaba on his left hand side to the black stone again, now this is one circumambulation, this is one tawa. And in some of these guides, in some of the books, you will find that for the first circumambulation, the first tawaf, there is a particular type of dhikr. And then in the second tawaf, there's another type of dhikr. And this is incorrect. There's no specific dhikr for each tawaf. Rather, a person remembers Allah and makes any type of dhikr, and makes dua, recites the Quran. And then when a person is making the tawaf around the Kaaba, when he reaches the corner, which is before the corner where the Hajr Aswad is. And this corner is known as a rukan al-Yamani. So when a person reaches this corner, he does not make takbir, he does not say Bismillah, Allahu Akbar, but then he begins to make the dua, Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana, wa fil akhirati hasana, waqina adhab al nar. And then he does not increase anything in addition to this. And then when he reaches the Hajr al-Aswad, now he has performed the first tawaf. And he carries on doing so until he has performed seven tawaf around the Kaaba. The last time when he finishes at Al-Hajr Al-Aswad, there is no more takbir, there is no more dua. And now he covers his shoulder and he prays a nafal, two raka'at, and this is known the sunnah of tawaf. And these two raka'at that he has, to, he has to pray in this position, he shouldn't be an obstacle for those people performing tawaf. Meaning it can be prayed anywhere behind maqam Ibrahim, even if you are further away and you should not be an obstacle for the people and then he prays these two raka'at in the first raka'ah he recites surah al-fatiha and then surah qul ya ayyuhal kafirun and then in the second raka'ah he recites surah al-fatiha and then surah qul huwallahu ahad and then after this 
he walks to as safa the Mount Safa. And these are two mountains, as safa and Al-Marwa. When the person reaches the Mount Safa, it is recommended for the person to recite the ayah in as safa wal marwa min sha'airillah. That as safa and marwa are from the great symbols of Allah, no. al Hajj. And of course, if you go to the Mount Safa, a person is able to walk all around the mountain, and this is not required. Rather, he has to come to the foot of the mountain, i.e., where the edge of the passageway is. So, a person comes to the foot of the mountain or the edge of the passageway and he faces the Qibla and he says, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lah, lahu al-mulk wa lahu al-hamd wa huwa ala kulli shayin qadir, La ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lah, anjaza wa'da wa nasra abda wa hazama al-ahzab wahda. And then he makes this dhikr and after completing this dhikr then he raises his hands and he makes dua. And then after this he lowers his hands and he says this dhikr again. And after completing this, this dhikr he raises his hands once more and he supplicates to Allah. And then he makes the dhikr once more. And then after making this dhikr then he walks from Safa to the foot of the Mount Marwa. And then whilst he's walking and making sa'i between As-Safa and Al-Marwa, he makes any dhikr, any remembrance of Allah. So there is no specific dua or dhikr for walking between As-Safa and Marwa except for that dhikr which was mentioned at Safa and at Marwa. And whilst a person is walking and making sa'i between Safa and Marwa, he continues walking until he sees the Marks, Mazat Khadra. Alamat Khadra, naam. And they are green lights which are still there today. So as soon as, as soon as he sees those green lights, then he can quicken his walking. And one passage from Safa to Marwa, this is one Sa'i. And then back from Marwa to Safa, this is the second one. Meaning the seventh one, where will it end? Will it end at Safa or Marwa? It will end at Marwa. The seventh one will be at Marwa. So naam. when a person makes the Sa'i seven times, then the seventh, seventh one, it will end at Marwa. However, on the seventh time when he ends at Marwa, he does not stand to face the Qibla and make dua. Rather, he immediately goes to get his hair shaved or cut. And then his hair is shaved with a razor, and this is better and more virtuous, more rewarding. Or his hair is cut or shortened. However, this is lesser than it being shaved. And as for... Uh, the females then they tie their hair together and a small amount like a small part of the finger this is cut from the hair 